There we are on the screen. All right, I'm gonna have to mute that because otherwise we'll get feedback. Welcome friends, it's Mike Mutzel and Deanna Mutzel. Hello. So this is our Saturday morning show. We're thinking about coming up with some funny, unique name, but it's just mm -hmm. you know kind of a him and her perspective. Yeah. You know, because there's a lot of people out there that um, are you know man, man, great men, great women that are talking about this stuff, but we want to mm -hmm. give you the balanced view, kind of like Fox News, but not really. <laughs> First thing in the <laughs> morning wish. on Saturday, and you know we're dressed in workout clothes because literally after we do these live shows, what we do is we go to the gym to work out, yeah. go out and hike, and we go play in the garden, play with our chickens, go hike and do a bunch of fun stuff like that. So um, we want to take your questions. So guys, I really appreciate you tuning in. So today we're going to talk about, you know, all things kind of low carb, mm -hmm. seasonally eating, mm -hmm. uh, high fat diets and exercise. And I think, you know, one of the things that I would love to, to tie into this because it's come up a lot in our Keto Lean Masterclass, which I'll put a link right here after we're done, is this idea that you need to have a lot of dietary fat to like burn fat for fuel. Right. And th there's, that just is not true, right? Exercise is, is really an important, you know, step and component element to burning fat more efficiently and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, Dana, you, you've done a really good job. we got some questions coming on. Awesome guys, thanks for being here. Um, you've done a great job of staying lean for a very long time throughout your life, you know, and exercise has been a huge element yeah. To that, right? Like your your diet has sort of wavered a little bit, you know, totally, in the sense like yeah. you've done, you know, yeah. some some keto, some vegan stuff, some raw stuff. Right. Never diet. Always more of a lifestyle. But yeah, I think I've definitely kind of fine tuned what works for me. Mm -hmm. It's not one size fits all. Yeah. So. But let's specifically talk about exercise. Okay. So regarding exercise, um, I just I think it's a big factor. You know, my mm -hmm. morning routine. Even this morning I get up, I do, I have a little coffee, do an hour of fasted cardio, and um, just always just makes me feel lean. It's like the icing on the cake, along with resistance, resistance training, excuse me. Um, but regarding the uh, dietary fat, no, I don't have bulletproof before I do that, the uh, cardio. I think we have plenty of reserves um, that'll kind of get you through. And if you're looking to especially lose weight, um, your body needs to kind of eat itself a little bit, you know? I wouldn't add more dietary fat. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Before so if I cardio. could interpret what you just said, when you're going to go out and exercise with the intention of, you know, kind of having more mental clarity in the morning, getting yeah. blood flow, you know, all the, all the attributes and the carryover that exercise have, but specifically if you're trying to exercise for fat loss, which obviously exercise is a great That's modality right, yeah. to lose weight, you don't really want to add extra energy into the system before right. you go exercise because we want to take the energy that we have stored and use that to finance that activity, i.e. Right. to fuel your exercise. And so right. um, Deanna gets on average, so we, we both have Fitbits and stuff like that, just to, you know, we're curious and, and things. Deanna on average gets no video. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, Melissa Lewis, um, no video. So you can hear us, but there's no video. That's weird because it's showing up on my computer here. So. Perhaps, perhaps, Melissa, that there is a, oh, it says it's here. Okay, so thanks, Melissa. Um, so we're here, sorry for the, the interruption. Oops. So we were talking about like, okay. if you wanna burn fat, it's good to just exercise fasted on an empty stomach. Even because... if it's for a couple of hours, sorry to interrupt my- Go ahead. Like, no, yeah, even if it's for a couple of hours, if you're going for just like a slow, steady site, or hike, excuse me, um, just go fasted. Yeah. Try it out, really. I don't think you'll fade away. Um, again, especially if, you are trying to lose weight. And um, by doing this, I've probably stated about 10 or 11% body fat, 365 days uh, a year, and I still get my menstrual cycle like super healthy. So, you know, it works. And I'm not overdoing the fat in yeah. the nutrition at all, you know? So. And so we've talked about that on past uh, live. So if you look on our playlist on the High Intensity Health channel, you'll see um, some of the past episodes we talked about. You know, one of the things that when Deanna first got into the keto thing three, four years ago, was doing excessive dietary fat, yeah. you know, as a means to get into ketosis when right. really exercise can be a great modality. So, so that's what we're kind of talking about today, guys. I see a lot of questions coming in, so I'm going to address those very, very soon. But for those of you just hopping on, please type in where you're from, hit that like button, smash that like button. If you're watching it right now, I'm watching the like buttons, please hit that if you like this content, if you like the channel, yes. that helps give us real-time feedback. So right. exercise is a wonderful modality. We're gonna talk about uh, hormones, testosterone and having high levels of androgens. Mm -hmm. It helps you to get uh, keto adapted and burn more, you know, your liver make more ketones so you can burn more fat for fuel. So that's unique. So I think that's an element, in the gender specific 
aspects of this whole ketogenic lifestyle really comes into play. There's been a lot of research actually on anabolic steroids and how steroids enhance. Your I'm not saying take steroids by any means, but we need to keep that into consideration that hormones play a huge role here. Mm -hmm. So this, this is a lifestyle, this is a whole body, um, you know, th this, we're talking about integrating functional medicine principles, exercise principles, dietary principles. It's not just about bacon and butter. Right. So. And then regarding the cardio really quick, I just want to hit that right. because we talked about, um, the AM cardio. I think it's Darcy. Um, Darcy, again, it just, it's just do whatever makes you feel good. Whatever you're going to be consistent with. Uh, for me, I, I like to either do a light jog, some intervals. Sometimes I'll sprint. I don't really plan it because in the morning, my whole goal is just to make it an hour of movement, okay? Sometimes I feel it like going hard and other times I don't. I don't put that pressure on me because when you start putting that kind of pressure on you, sometimes it becomes a stress and then you don't kind of follow through with it as more of a lifestyle, so. Um, Moving the microphone closer. Yeah, I just, I managed to, I personally managed to stay lean without, I don't do a ton of high intensity when I'm um, lifting weights at the gym, I'll throw in box jumps and battle rope and so forth. But in the morning, I just love getting out and moving and getting in 10,000 steps. So um, it just- How many steps do you have right now? So it's 830. I have about 12,000. Yeah, can I'll we, get up to about 2530 today. Let me, today. while you're talking, I'm just gonna, <laughs> this is impressive guys, because it's 830 on a Saturday morning where we're at. Yeah. Um, and That's Deanna's already got her 12,000 steps. You know, a lot of people, uh, even active people, aren't getting this in a whole day. Yeah, Check and I'll get in probably about 25, 30,000 steps today, and that's just walking the dog, gardening, being active with our daughter, um, you know, but it's nice to, it's like making the bed in the morning. My routine, getting up and going for a jog or getting some movement makes me feel productive, so it really helps, you know, with work and, and my brain, and I think about, you know, I, I mental clarity, as Mike said, um, think of, you know, business ideas. It's just yeah. a really precious time for me. Precious. Precious. <laughs> so there's a book right here. Keep talking to Anna because I want to share this book. Okay. Um, um, I hope more. I answered that question about the cardio. Uh, let me yeah, get some questions. We definitely want to get to some questions. Wonderful book, guys, called Daily Rituals. So all about yeah, uh, gotta read that individuals one. that have contributed, whether it's creatively, scientifically, from a philosophical perspective, business perspective about daily rituals and about these individuals, these creative, these entrepreneurial, these scientific minds, what they did. And so it's, it's so important. Uh, how's the audio by the way? Cause this microphone's all screwed up, but it's, um, daily rituals are so, so important. And so that's, yeah. you know, when the Deanna and I have totally different rituals, I don't like to get out and do an hour of exercise. Uh, although I stay lean by doing gardening and walking and reading, and then I exercise later in the day and we do an evening walk. So it's just find, I think the most important thing is a lot of people say like, should I do yoga? Should I do CrossFit? Should I do bodybuilding? Yeah. Whatever exercise modality gets you into a flow-like state where you're feeling creative, where you don't have to borrow, borrow all this extra motivation to like do that thing. Right. Whatever the thing that gets you into the flow state and you're like in the zone, that's what you want to do. Yes. And if it's not resistance training, fine. If it's yoga, cool. If it's Pilates, yeah. great. It doesn't really matter as long as it gets you into the flow state. And I think that's the most important thing we'd like to help our Keto Lean Masterclass members kind of identify for themselves what gets them into the flow state so that they can continue to make this a lifestyle shift. And also it depends on what you do for a living, for work, okay? Mm -hmm. So on days that I go to the chiropractic office, which I'm there for like seven, sometimes eight hour shifts, I don't walk a lot. I'm, I'm very active. I'm adjusting patients, but I make it in seriously like 500 steps based on my Fitbit. So knowing that in the morning, I'll do a lot of movement, okay, to make up for that. And then after work, we'll do a family hike. So it, you know, thankfully, thankfully, I don't have a desk job. And when I do have to do computer work, I'm standing. Um, I'm just always very cognizant of movement and keeping my body moving. Um, it's not just about that workout at the gym or whatnot. It's just moving all of the time. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to get you healthy and Key. and keep you lean and keep you in and out of ketosis along with a, the proper nutritional plan. So, 
Awesome, Dana. Okay, so definitely want to get to the questions. A lot of questions are coming in, friends. So if you're watching the replay, we're diving into to live questions here. And if you're on here, thanks for being here. So quite a few people from Canada, which is really cool. Deanna's from Ontario. Uh, so Darlene says, I could not find Relax Max. I found something similar called Pure Something or whatever. Um, so so Darlene, what we're referring to, it's one of our show sponsors here, Zymogen. This is our all-time favorite formula here to help uh, people get to sleep better, mm -hmm. to help them calm down some of that, that mental chatter that goes on at night. And it's also really good for insulin sensitivity. So we're not talking about curing, preventing, or treating any disease here, guys. We're talking about optimizing your metabolism. And this features taurine, magnesium, myo-inositol, L-theanine, GABA. Mm -hmm. And it's a powder. We swear by it in our okay. family. Our, our five-year-old daughter <laughs> loves it. We both absolutely love it. I would highly recommend checking it out. And if you become a Keto Lean Masterclass member, which I'll put the link right here, you can get a 15% discount on Zamogen Formula. So that's one bonus awesome. about becoming a member. And not only that, you get access to us in private Facebook groups and weekly conference calls and all of our food guides. And you're gonna learn how to make Deanna's amazing, amazing, Keto microbiome friendly bread. See, we're working really hard on a new course, you guys, right now. It should be launching in about three weeks. And um, I'm really, really excited about this. I finally just decided to do it. Um, I've been doing it over 10 years, and it has saved our family and our daughter, who's five. Um, I'm just super excited. So stay tuned. Cool. So yeah. that's going to be a separate new course, but you yeah. can learn how to make this in the Keto Lee Master Class. And mm -hmm. The importance to underscore with everything that we're talking about here, and we're getting to your questions very, very shortly, is that the microbiome diversity and bacterial diversity trumps pretty much everything else. So you really need to focus on that. And this is a very microbiome diverse bread, meaning it, it's gonna stimulate bacterial diversity there because there's a wide array of vegetables and phytonutrients. So mm -hmm. Rob says, I'm, I'm, uh, I am losing out on the benefits of growth hormone with others instead of gaining the benefits weight loss due to lower fat intake. Um, so Rob, just curious, why are you having a lower fat diet? I'm just kind of curious on that. If you're trying to, to kind of lose weight, um, so that might mean that you're really restricting your calories. So remember, you know, for, I'm, I'm moving the microphone back here because I can tell it's a little, um, little in the way here. So remember a few different things. And we talked about this with Dr. Jason Fung. And I know a lot of you have commented, like he said, you know, if you restrict your calories, that's not a good weight loss tool. And what he was referring to in that is obviously if you, rest if you only eat 200 calories a day, you're going to lose weight and probably muscle and wither away. But for most people, they're, they're trying to like do 1200 calories or 1400 calories per day as a weight loss modality. But they're, that's not necessarily changing the hormones involved in governing you know, body fat storage versus body fat, you know, removal or burning fat for fuel. Mm -hmm. So remember, you want to construct your diet that is going to optimize your hormones as well, because the hormones are really at the end of the day, and also your microbiome constitution and other things uh, control how much f fat is being burned as fuel and how much um, fat is being stored, right? So that's what we want to focus on. And so when you eat a lower carb, you know, even you know, high protein, moderate fat, or moderate protein, high fat, but keep the carbs low. For most people, if you're relatively fairly active, but you're not doing CrossFit or some very high intensity type workouts, which would mean you would want more carbohydrates to fuel that, even if you're keto. Mm -hmm. um, that's gonna optimize your hormones and your microbiome. So that's kind of the thing. So Rob, just curious, can you type in, why are you doing a lower fat type diet? I'm just curious about that. Um, okay, so and then also incorporating intermittent fasting or restricted you know, compressing feeding, that feeding window is really definitely really key. to give your gut a break. Hey, Mary from Milwaukee. I love Milwaukee. It's a really awesome city. Okay. What's that restaurant we went to? Um, it's like a paleo restaurant. It's it's I want to. It's called. Uh, it's like right downtown. Remember? In I Milwaukee. remember, but I just can't remember the name. So, Mary, there's a, a paleo type restaurant. It's called like the Fork or. Oh, hey, that's what it was. It's something like Fork, that. Fork, yeah. Uh, hello from Ottawa, Canada. Thanks for being here, Rudy Studios. Rudy Studios, Sam Hahn, who does all the video work behind the scenes for the channel. How's our setup? We look a little orange, but. And, and Dar uh, Darlene, yeah, it's, that's a lot of steps, but it's a good goal, and sometimes it's a struggle. I don't always get that many steps in a day, but when I do, my Fitbit flashes like fireworks. And I yeah, it's pretty, pretty fun, actually. Yeah, so. Awesome, all right, hello from Germany. Awesome boss, thanks for being here. Uh, hello from Quebec, Canada. Okay, so Summit okay. Kana says, where are you at here? Oh my gosh, you just went away. I have to go scroll all the way back. Oh my gosh, so many questions here. Um, hello from Journey. Uh, okay, how can one increase weight on ketosis? So this is a really good question. How can you gain weight while you're on a ketogenic diet? So uh, this can be a little bit challenging because you have to have 
a lot of fat and a lot of protein. So, you know, I, I was, you guys may know Rich Piana. So he's a kind of a, a real influential individual in the bodybuilding, you know, fitness, muscle mass community. He's, he's got this um, YouTube channel. I think it's called 5% Nutrition or, anyway. Um, you know, I was working out with him actually. I was, we were at the same gym and I saw him and we started talking and all this sort of stuff, talking about the ketogenic diet. And he's like, you know, I love the ketogenic diet, but it's kind of hard to build muscle on a ketogenic diet. Not because of the hormones that are changed in ketosis, but just the mm -hmm. fact that, you know, if you want to build muscle, you're gonna have to have a surplus extra calories, you know, 250 to 500 extra calories per day mm -hmm. to um, help to increase muscle protein synthesis and add that extra energy. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to do if you're eating a lot of fat because fat, you know, as we talked about in many other podcasts, guys, if you guys have been following the channel, it takes a lot more to break down and absorb and process. You need bile acids. It's unlike amino acids and glucose and carbohydrates that are really rad readily absorbed across the gut. Mm -hmm. So can you do it? You can absolutely do it. I would suggest supplementing with things like whey protein, branched chain amino acids, um, you know, adding in more carbohydrates on days where you're lifting very heavy. Right. So that's what I would say if you want to gain weight on a ketogenic diet, it may not be totally strict keto. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the thing you need to kind of think about and fine tune. Everyone is so different. Right. Now, obviously if you want to gain weight, which means muscle, might, we don't want to gain fat weight. It's easy to gain fat weight, just have more carbs, right? <laughs> um, but I think it's like, um, your body again, don't forget, like, even if you do have carbs, when you're healthy and you get to that state, your body is going to naturally, and this is, correct me if I'm wrong, um, it will naturally go in and out of ketosis. Okay, we have friends that don't even know they're on a ketogenic plan and they're doing carbs here and they're generally low carb because they're eating real food, unprocessed food. Um, and, you know, one of our friends, Jeff, he has, he just keeps muscle on pretty well mm -hmm. and he's not worried about you know, fat intake or protein and so forth. Doesn't just, track macros. Or yeah, anything. yeah. So, um, and he probably eats a lot more carbs than we do. He eats a lot of carbs. Yeah, probably lean. 150 grams or more a day. Yeah. But on any given time in between meals, his ketone levels are like 0. 0.8 or higher. Yeah. So I know we have a lot of people in our master class who like can't get to that level. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting. So his whole lifestyle is, you know, around getting good sleep. He's managing stress. He's right. very active. So it's non exercise induced thermogenesis, the NEAT. So just daily movement is yeah. really, really high. Yeah. Doing a lot of strength training, adding active. a lot of novelty to the strength training. So it's not like the same workout every time. Yeah. So key stuff here. So we got to get to the questions. Yeah. All right. So Darlene says she has the same mug. Cool, Darlene. That's really awesome. Oh, I saw yeah, that. Oh yeah, I've got my M mug. Yeah. Hello from France. Thanks for being here, guys. Um, hello. Uh, someone from the Netherlands. I haven't seen anyone yet, Leandro. But uh, anyway, so audio is good, which is awesome. Can fasting lower my metabolism rate? That's such a good question. Yes, absolutely you can. Uh, like, if, if done too long, Yeah. right? So 48-hour yeah. fast, 72-hour fast. I mean, um, th there's benefits to maybe some of that periodically yeah. from a spiritual perspective or whatever. But <laughs> Yeah, you know, when we intermittent fast, it's just generally like... 16, eight. Okay. Or sometimes I'll do a feeding window of six hours. Uh, realistically it's about seven or eight, but it's just not enough time to really lower that I believe. So it's kind of like fast feeding, mm -hmm. feeding fast really feeding. compressing that feeding window. Yeah. And that's the easiest way. If you're, if you're trying to, if you're new to this whole ketogenic diet thing, or you want to lose weight, like the easiest thing that you can do is just compress that feeding window. Yeah. So f try to fast for at least 16 hours a day and just, you know, eat within that eight hour window. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of research on this. You know, obviously you can, it's fast longer and you eat for shorter periods of time, but right. I think a lot of people can do the 16 8. It's pretty easy. Pretty easy. You guys. Yeah. Um, okay, so Rob says, Yeah, I do the 16 8. Awesome. Hello from New York, Sydney. Okay, so Kathleen says, Can BCAs help prevent muscle loss even when you're not exercising? Absolutely. So there's a lot of research actually on Zymogen Zymabolics, which is a branch chain amino acid that we recommend and recommend to our, our Keto Lean Masterclass members uh, that has over 23 human studies on it. It's a mm -hmm. unique array of not only BCAs, but also histidine and arginine, and has been clinically studied in bedridden individuals to actually increase muscle protein synthesis. So even if you're not exercising um, and you want to slow down age-related muscle loss, guys, remember where we burn fat for fuel and how our quote-unquote metabolism is increased or whatnot, our BMR, basal metabolic rate, is determined by your lean muscle mass. So you got to have that, that stuff in there. So if you're you know, vegetarian, vegan, you're not getting enough protein, or you just want that extra stimulus to prevent the muscle loss, I highly recommend branched chain amino acids. There's a lot of them out there. Mm -hmm. You just want to take BCAs that are free of glutamine. 
Glutamine and leucine compete for absorption, and if they're paired together, it's not ideal for stimulating muscle protein stimulus in mTOR. So that's why I like the Zymogen Zymobolics. We I'll have Nancy up. talking about salt. Um, so she saw the, the podcast you had done. Yeah, She's sleeping better James and explaining Dinek. why. Awesome. Explaining why you have to increase your salt intake while you're in the ke uh, ketogenic. Yeah, so Nancy, that's a really good question. James Dinek talks all about that in his book and on the video. Um, so basically, insulin helps to insulin helps regulate uh, sodium resorption and excretion in the kidneys. And so a ketogenic or low-carb diet is a low-insulin diet, so you're going to actually lose more salt when you're keto. Your body will acclimate over time, but this is more initially. And obviously, we recommend as part of a ketogenic diet is sauna, detox, exercise, right. all that. You're probably doing coffee too before exercise, which we recommend. All those things deplete your body in salt. Mm -hmm. And so you just got to eat more salt. That's the bottom line. It's awesome that I, I hear you say that it helps you sleep better, which is really cool. Right. Okay, Rob says, question. I've been keto for two months now. I lost 26 pounds. Rob, really, really awesome. Ooh, I started losing more weight once I lowered my fat intake to 130 grams. Wow. Wait, you didn't eat more bacon? No, I'm just kidding. So that's really interesting. Um, to around, yeah, that's great. Okay, so that's really cool. So Rob, th this brings up a very important element of biochemical individuality that yeah. we're so unique biochemically, mm -hmm. microbially, you know, epigenetically. So just because the guru recommends having like a gram per kilo of fat in, per day, yeah. you know, you got to try it on and see if it fits. Yeah, I can't. I can't do a ton either. You know, it, it just messes with me. So I just think not overdoing it, you know, um, generous amounts of, of dressing on your salad, but like not adding a big stick of butter in your coffee type of thing. Yeah. So. And you know what? I mean, there's a lot of people in the keto space. There's so many podcasts now and stuff like that, you know, um, when it comes to low carb and ketosis and a lot of the, the kind of the gurus are, you know, if you look at their Instagram accounts and the food that they're eating, it's just excessive and they're, yeah. they're not necessarily always the fittest people in the world, right? right? So that's the thing is like, you know, if keto is an excuse to have low carb chicken wings and, you know, bacon all the time, right. you know, then you're not, you know, you, sure, yeah. it might fit your macros and you might be in ketosis, right? But you may not have the physique that you are probably looking for and that's, right. you know, and that's the thing. So we're not picking on anyone or anything, no, but I do no. see a lot of... Just the other day, I saw you know in a, in a popular keto group, um, someone was talking about how she's like, "Yes, I finally mastered the buffalo chicken wings that are ketogenic," and it's like, you know what? If regular chicken wings and all that type of food got you overweight and insulin resistant and all that, then why are you going to try and replicate a low carb version? Why not just ditch the mindset that you can have chicken wings and have real food instead? Just right? real so, food. And, and you could That's argue sticky. that chicken wings are real food, but they're breaded and fried and all that. So it's just, anyway, we got to stick to more microbiome friendly food that's right. also low carbon ketogenic friendly. So that's right. the message that we convey, guys. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so a few questions come in. I am fitness 360, L arginine and ketosis. Okay, so I don't really know the question. So L arginine pre workout. Uh, L-arginine before sex can increase endothelial nitric oxide synthase. It can help to increase blood flow. So yeah, it's good. It's good pre-workout. It's good for the brain. It's good for focus. It can be good pre-sex. <laughs> so uh, it, uh, is it anti-keto or pro-keto? I, I don't know the answer to that question. Good question though. Okay, TST 1998. If I go really low carb, salmon, avocado, etc., get muscle pain, um, coronary even coronary artery, artery spasm. How do you know if you're having a coronary artery spasm? Once I went to the ambulance in the hospital and had 20 ketones. Urine. Wow. You know what I would um, suggest? You need to work with a healthcare practitioner. Yeah. I, we can't give you the healthcare advice like I would love to, but it's not ethical or legal. Um, so you need to work with a healthcare practitioner. Yeah. If your ketones um, or 20 in the urine, I, I don't know how that translates. I'm not sure um, what what that would be. I've never if heard you that. Feel, if you feel crappy doing, Change it. doing this, then just don't do it. You know, it's not for everybody. And it's not one size fits all period. So. Okay. SuperTap says, SuperTap007 says, I've been keto for about three months. What um, nutrition do you recommend for cyclists? Oh. Love it. As you guys know, I used to be a uh, semi-pro cyclist and raced in the pro one, two category in Boulder, Colorado for a number of years. So um, what I would suggest is, you know, on recovery rides, you can go very low carb keto. When you're racing or you're doing like group rides where there's a lot of bursts, a lot of intervals, forget trying to be keto during that ride, just fuel the rides. You have a really, really good workout. Mm -hmm. And so don't try to be keto at the expense of having poor exercise performance. Right. A lot of people do that and, and it's just not ideal, right? 
So you can be mostly keto, but around exercise, have the freaking carbohydrates, man. Don't try to be a hero. You're going to have a <laughs> shitty workout. So just keep that in mind. And uh, I know I'm going to get some hate haters on that. That's anyway. okay, though. You know, yeah. when you expose yourself like this, you're going to get haters. Okay. But please so, don't uh, here right now. <laughs> Verena says, hello from beautiful BC. Where in BC are you? I love BC. Um, I'm going to be there Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Anyway, so she says, um, just returned to work as a nurse after uterine cancer. I'm sorry to hear about that. Mm. Uh, weight won't shift. Neither keto nor fasting works. Hormones are messed up. I follow Dr. Fung, etc. cetera. Hmm. So is, this is a Deanna question. Well... Again. Exercise. <laughs> I think start with exercise. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Start start with just exercise and just not high intensity. Just get out, walk, move, meditate. Just get your hormones back to normal. Um, feel calm. You feel balanced. Get rid of this stress or at least manage your stress. And then eat real food. And then hopefully things will just start to get into equilibrium. That's what I always do. If I'm just feeling like just crummy one week or we've been traveling mm -hmm. or I've had a lot of, um, you know, work, I just kind of get down to the basics and I always start with movement. So movement and easy mindset. movement, just walking. So not like a four hour CrossFit workout? Not hour. <laughs> no. What? I'm just kidding. Okay. So yeah. So that's what I would suggest too. I mean, you know, if weight isn't budging, and you're exercising, then we really need to look deeper and stuff like that and figure out what's going on. Is it environmental toxins? Is it poor sleep? Yeah. You know, but most people can start to see some noticeable shifts in their physique with exercise. Yes. So if yeah. you're ever like hitting a plateau, look at your exercise first and see, because if, you know, the thing is, and I try to get a snippet from Adam Schaefer over at Mind Pump, I'll share it next week, you know, but if you're not exercising your diet, you know, and we've known this to be true, but he articulated it so well, your diet has to be so dialed. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. So yeah. the cool part, we're talking about Jeff and other friends, like when you're exercising, doing weight training specifically, your diet can have a little bit more leeway yeah. and you can have a little bit more carbs and a little bit more cheat meal and things like that. Mm -hmm. So hello from Sydney, Australia. Thanks for being, oh my gosh. Okay. Um, okay. So I can get some at Walmart and Canada. Ooh, um, Walmart is not a place to buy food. So I, what were you going to get at Walmart? Sorry. I'm not to hating on you Walmart. On Amazon. She might be talking to uh, maybe it's like a device. Uh, hopefully it's a device. Let's yes. just, hopefully it's a device. Okay. Um, Pender Island, BC. Oh, cool. So that Pender Island, that's kind of near Nanaimo. Is that? Uh, let us know. Awesome. Okay. So Sean says, would like to know your knowledge experience, keto, low carb with APOE4 genes, high cholesterol, Alzheimer's impaired, saturated fat metabolism. Yeah, this is uh, really good information. I would check out Dale Bredesen. He's got a lot of good research when it comes to APOE4 genotyping and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, also the episode that we did with Jeffrey Gerber back in February. So go on the channel, type in Jeffrey Gerber on YouTube. That'll pull it up. We talk all about that. Uh, in brief, you know, APOE4 is just one genetic polymorphism that is associated with uh, Alzheimer's and things like that. There's multiple, right? So I think we need to look at the whole picture. Just because you have one gene SNP doesn't mean you can or can't have fat. It's all, you know, there's a multitude of factors here. But I would argue that if you're getting fat from things like avocado, from coconut, from free range, pasture raised eggs, mm -hmm. you know, that's not going to be a major issue. But like for yourself, you may not, you know, have 150 grams of fat per day. Maybe it's more like 80 grams of fat. So maybe you're mm -hmm. like more of a high protein, moderate fat, low carb person, which is totally okay. But those episodes, it, I mentioned spe specifically with Jeffrey Gerber, we talk a lot more about that. So hopefully that helps. I don't mean to mm -hmm. you know, gloss over it, but that would give you a lot more detail there yes, in context. Many Canadians on, yes. Stephen Levitt Canadians. says, I feel great <laughs> on keto, but I notice a couple of weeks I tend to be spotty a bit. This is you. Again, that's kind of like a I know question. Um, Have you noticed any hormonal changes? Um, uh, oh my gosh, again, like if it's something that's causing problems, I just obviously there's something deeper, you know. And um, it's interesting. Like this whole thing is interesting to me. Like um, classifying, we don't really classify ourselves as like keto. We would say like low carb. Wouldn't you agree? I think it intermittent keto and intermittent I think keto, but seasonally. Like, go ahead. 
Well, I was just gonna say, um, I don't want to be defined by any way of eating. Yeah, that's exactly it. Like, yeah. I don't want to be like, oh, I'm this person or I'm that person. It's like, right. I, I do want to be defined as, you know, every time we eat, when we think about buying food, eating food, cooking food, what is this going to do to my microbiome? Right, you know, that's because, number one. Because this yeah. is the organ, the ecosystem that's communicating and cross-talking with your brain, with your immune system, with your metabolic system, with your hormones, how you think, feel, move, burn mm -hmm. fat, longevity, everything. So that comes first. So Stephanie, to answer your question, if it's something's wrong and it's not normally something that happens, then just don't do it. It's not Change it up. Change it up or just consult with your doctor, obviously, to find out what's going on and get some testing done. Um, but yeah, just something's not right there. Yeah. yeah. If you don't feel good, don't do it. So for, for those of you coming on, Stephanie was saying that she gets spotty after a few weeks of being on, on keto and so forth. Yeah. So so then switch something up. Change one variable at a time and mm -hmm. see. You know, a lot of people, because the whole keto thing is getting so popular right now, mm -hmm. they feel that that's the most important thing. Like, forget dietary diversity. Forget microbiome diversity. Right. Forget all this stuff. It's like, as long as I'm in ketosis, everything else is good. And it's like... We have to start with the end in mind, right? Mm -hmm. This, you know, Stephen Covey and many others, you know, Stoicism, if you read books, you know, The Daily Stoic by Ryan Holiday, we, we got to start with the end in mind, mm -hmm. right? When you are making money, getting up in the morning, what's the end goal of your day? What's the end goal of your week? What's the end goal of your month? To what end are you doing this thing? So to what end are you getting into ketosis? Audience. Just to have high levels of ketones? Right. Who gives a flying fuck matter. about that? <laughs> I mean, uh, sorry, if, if you have brain Canadians cancer, here, we can do that. <laughs> if you have brain cancer or you have a lot of concussions, I get it, right? right. Or if, or if you uh, have epilepsy. Mm -hmm. But if you're just, you know, the average person that you're listening to podcasts, you're trying to lose a little weight, you know, having a really high levels of ketones doesn't really... It could be a bad thing too, actually, right? It can mean you're not utilizing it can, fat. Yeah, I mean that your body's not actually utilizing it. So don't just base it on that number. You know, just like the scale, just bad altogether. Like just focus on you're eating real food and ketosis will happen along with exercise, period. It'll happen. So. Yeah. So Darson, uh, Darsing NY says, okay, I have an issue with beer. I feel your pain, brother. Uh, I play hockey and we have <laughs> beer after each game. What can I do? Uh, social pressure. Yeah, so... Look, if you just played a tough hockey game, have a little <laughs> bit of beer. I mean... Like moderation is fine, of course. Yeah. You know, there's actually yeah. some interesting research papers showing that alcohol may be mildly ketogenic. Okay? So I'm not saying go out and drink extra alcohol, but if you're going to drink a little bit, probably not a big deal, mm -hmm. especially after you worked out, you know? Yeah. But, you know, beer does contain, you know, GMO wheat and, you know, it's barley, things like that, right? So maybe try to get organic beer, mm -hmm. beer made from organic grains gluten-free beer, kombucha beer, try to, you know, be in that situation uh, without that. And if you really, you know, are serious and you have a health issue and, you know, you want to lose weight and so forth, diabetes maybe, mm -hmm. um, what you can do is just pour water into a red cup and no one will know that you're not drinking beer. So that's another thing that a, a tip that I like to recommend. You're just not daily, um, just once in a while too. Don't make it a daily habit. That's when it gets bad. He says, after hockey games. Gosh, we have so many Canadians on. Yeah, the hockey is, can happen every day for Canadians. This is true. Like yeah, Canadian as well. <laughs> Hi, so many Canadians here. Oh my gosh, this is so funny. Okay, um, so a few questions. Let's see. Have we talked all about... Um, let's see here. Keto adaptation is brutal. Yeah, uh, Stefford G2, what, why would you say it's brutal? I'm just cur curious what, why yeah, you say that. Yeah, definitely explain that. What are your experiences with it? Uh, what kind of nutrition were you doing before going keto? Type of thing like for us it wasn't that difficult because we were already eating real food for the most part except we had probably more alcohol at the time just like a yeah. daily glass of wine um absolutely it looks like i need to update the computer screen just a little bit here guys but what i want to do is play with it before we part ways and we have a few more questions coming on i want to play with you a snippet of an upcoming podcast with dr tommy wood all about you know putting this carbohydrate uh, consumption into the right context, particularly if you exercise. So here's the snippet, and I'm gonna adjust the camera. I think you'll really enjoy this. Um, ooh, this is 720p, uh-oh. It might look a little bit funny, but let's roll with it. A lot of the people that end up coming to us, they tend to be, a lot of them are high intensity athletes. So CrossFit, obstacle course racing is, is um, really popular, rowers maybe as well. Um, and what they're finding is that they switch to like a, a keto diet and you know, as always, like often you feel really great to start with, or you know after that first little hump, you feel really great, and then just things start to fall apart. So we have these guys in their 30s and 40s, you know, working a tough job, have a young family, trying to train CrossFit or obstacle course racing, 
keto diet so they're not fueling some of this glycolytic activity they're doing and then you know thyroid hormone drops testosterone drops libido drops you know everything just starts stops working and then it's sort of trying to transition so you find a middle ground mm -hmm. and there's a there's a lot of really good data coming out on approaches like cycling carbohydrate intake so a sleep low approach so maybe like one day a week um, you do some high intensity exercise you know try and deplete some of your muscle glycogen then you eat all right guys what do you think about that um the important why I wanted to share that with you is because that podcast is coming up next week. So I wanted to give you a little primer. So if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please do so. Also, if you didn't know, we're also on iTunes. So if you listen to podcasts, check it out, High Intensity Health on iTunes. But you know, Dr. Tommy Wood was talking about Deanna. I, I don't know if you could hear that. He was talking about how a lot of people um, are, you know, keto and they're doing a lot of like long duration, super short, high intensity workouts. Mm -hmm. Do you use is that your stomach? That was totally my stomach. Dude, do you yeah. I wonder if they heard that? I don't you know, think... yeah, I yeah. Anyway, so so we need to uh, fuel our exercise performance uh, commensurate with the, the the amount of exercise and intensity that we're doing, the type of fuels that we're using during our exercise. Mm -hmm. We need to eat those type of fuels and not try and fit you know a, a round peg into a square hole. That's mm -hmm. the whole point. So, you know, he was saying that a lot of people they're doing you know glycolytic like work like sprints and crossfit really explosive movements are trying to do that while being 100 percent keto and restrict their carbs and then they get burnt out right. so i want to help you avoid that mistake and that's one of the uh, one of the benefits of our keto lean master classes we provide you with documentary style little snippets to give you a better perspective and some of that insider perspective about how to stay you know fit and lean and burn more fat for fuel so Cynthia, thanks for being here. I, I recognize your face here. So you're just tuning in. You want to find more if we guys have good benefits on increasing salt. Take a ton of benefits on increasing your salt intake. Check out the recent podcast with Dr. James DiNicola Antonio and his book, uh, The Salt Fix. Okay. Thanks, um, Rachel. Thanks for loving us. Okay, after you're watching. Yeah, so there's <laughs> there's total benefits. Rachel Hyman, where are you coming in from, Rachel? Thanks for being here. New Jersey. Um, hi from Baran. I don't know where that is. Hmm. So please... Hey, Okay, hello from Western Australia. We love Australia. Want to go to Melbourne soon? Oh, yes. Okay, hi from Fidlam. Hi from Finland. Uh, carbs before. <laughs> <laughs> you okay, brother? Well, I don't know, man. Um, it was my I feel a little You're extra stuttering. pressure reading like the comments, but anyway. This is really good okay. coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so hi from Finland. Uh, carbs before weightlifting and exercise. Do they have a glycemic effect or whatever? Um, what ratio do you recommend pounds per week? So uh, it's more of a coming from a guy. Maybe you answer that. It Can depends I... on. So obviously not. You know, when we talk about like exercise, everyone's version of exercise is different. Mm -hmm. So how much weight are you lifting? Are you going to failure? You're doing German volume training. How intense. long have you been training? Yeah. How much fat do you have to lose? Like there's a. So I, I don't many, mean. Yeah. We don't want to overcomplicate this yeah. at all. Yeah. However, uh, <laughs> if you're lifting really, really freaking hard and you're busting your ass, have carbohydrates. Right. If you're a little pudgy around the middle and you're working out because you want to lose weight, uh, then you don't need as many carbohydrates, yeah. right? Performance but, versus weight loss, really. But if you're, if you, if you don't have enough fuel in the tank, meaning like you feel tired while you're working out, you know, or fatigued, or you, you could have done one more rep, but it just wasn't there, then have a little bit more calories, a little bit more carbohydrates. Yeah. Would you agree? Totally agree. Cool. I've been there, yeah. Um, hello from Dubai. Okay, cool. Awesome. <clears throat> so that was uh, where Brahana, Brahana is, I think. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so Michael says, is there a scientist who has investigated raw food? Michael, this is a really good question. I don't think there is. There is a book about enzymes and I bought it like 11, 12 years ago. Um, I don't even know if I still have it. I'll have to, we'll, we'll talk about that next time. Yeah, that's a good um, time. but, but I mean, if we, if we think about it, you know, um, it makes a little bit more sense from a quote unquote teleological perspective, right? That humans did eat a lot more raw food mm -hmm. prior to microwaves and the ability to like yeah. cook. We were talking about this in the context of eating yeah, eggs. Yeah. Last night. Uh, okay. Cause we have 19 chickens in the backyard. Maybe you can or can't hear them. We've shared them on other videos, but how on God's green earth did these uh, unindustrialized humans cook an egg before we had, you know, steel. Right. I think it'd be really challenging. Maybe you could, maybe what, what they did was like carved out wood and put wood and prevented it from burning and put the egg on it. But you know, I think that's too much work. Yeah. I think a lot more meat and eggs was just eaten raw. You're just eating raw, yeah. So maybe we'll start eating raw eggs. I, I've been doing that for a while, then I stopped. But now that we have our own chickens, and I was actually, before we started this video, I was actually just gonna throw down a raw egg oh, or two. Oh, we should have done that. 
we'll, I can we'll get it if that. you guys want. If you guys want me to demonstrate how you do a raw egg, let me know. We've also done raw uh, goose and duck just eggs. Just put them in smoothies. You'll never just another psst, know. Go yeah. down. Okay, yeah. so Michael, good question on raw food. Um, let's see, we have another question comes in. Um, if someone was in ketosis and had some carbs, then did it work out within 24 hours, do you think that workout would burn glycogen stores and uh, would go back into ketosis? Well, mm -hmm. what I would say here is um, glycogen synthesis and ketosis, you know, there's not... The requirements to get into ketosis is low blood glucose, low blood insulin, right? And there's other ways, obviously fasting and things like that that we can do. So don't confuse the two with glycogen replenishment and ketosis. Um, you can, funky, funky mystic, you can absolutely have carbohydrates before or during or after a HIIT workout and with be still in ketosis shortly thereafter. Right. So. Right, right. That's a short answer to the question. Anna says, uh, I, had, I, I added some resistance charts food before my workouts and noticed a big difference. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. I have not yet done that. That's good one with Erin. Um, Lisa from this. Chicago. Oh, which one? Which one? She said, I, I love Chicago. We almost oh. <laughs> moved there. Uh, but we still live in Seattle, Washington. Okay, so, so Dennis it, says, hello from the UK. Go ahead. So, oh, I'm just, I just saw Aaron pop up here. I'm sorry, guys. We're just trying to get all of these. Hello from Nor Northwest loved. Arkansas. Loving this. Would you share your daily supplement uh, regime? There you go. What you cannot right. go with, without. Aaron, <laughs> this is the key here. So this is by Zymogen. So um, we created a own, our own customized packet. So it's got... You can see the name on it, okay? So this is a unique attribute of being a member of the High Intensity Health uh, podcast and channel and so forth. You get 15% discount on Zymogen Formulas. But mm -hmm. what's unique about this is we can design things and it's all in a packet. So you can travel with it, put it in your pocket, do a pre-workout, et cetera. So supplements that I recommend, we, we talked about this in other videos and we have webinars for our, our members. Mm -hmm. uh, Berberine hydrochloride is so key for, for a lot of you that are interested in keto, low carb, and lo weight loss and losing weight and so forth. Omega-3 fats, uh, the Monopure from Zymogen is really fantastic because mm -hmm. it's a high concentration of monoglyceride-based omega-3 <laughs> fats. How's oh, your stomach again? <laughs> this coffee's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like talking to Do me. Do you need to like go to the bathroom no. real quick? Oh, I'm right. totally fine. Yeah, Thanks, I don't know if she, I appreciate you guys that. could hear it, but it was a little You're loud. like family, you know, we we'll um, talk about this stuff. <laughs> Yeah, so we've been so that's what I would suggest. So uh, I'll put the link like right here, a uh, little card, or right below, and you can learn a little bit more about how to become a member. And so that's you know berberine hydrochloride, monoglyceride-based fish oil, a probiotic, you know, and, and also Relax Max. Those are some of the things that are like core uh, in the in the uh, program. Also, uh, amino acids, branch chain amino acids are key, pre and post workout. Okay, All hello from San Diego. Day. Thanks for being here. Okay, so we have time for two more questions, guys. This so is a good Ruben. One here. Okay, uh, yeah, hello from Parker, Colorado. Hopefully that's Parker, Colorado. Love Colorado. Yeah, some friends that live there. I do alternate day fast uh, now, um, and then two, every two weeks uh, increase for a month or so, etc. I get into ketosis on 35th hour fast. Is that okay to go back and forth? Totally okay to go back and forth. Yeah. Um, if you feel good, do so, it. So right? B, B. Ruben, how are you defining getting into ketosis? Like, like are you testing them? Blood measurements and so on. Um, it seems like that's a long time. 35 hours? It would, that would be, yeah. That's to a get long into, time. I mean. How do you feel doing that? Just curious. Yeah, if that's working for you and it's yeah. helping with weight loss, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Aaron, hopefully the supplement regime kind of helped you out a little bit. Uh, Devon says, hello neighbor high from Ballard, awesome. <laughs> uh, we might go to Seattle later today. Exogenous ketones, oh, we love this question. Mike? Go for it. Well, I know you love this question. I don't, I, I just, I don't take them. You don't take them. No. Why don't we take them, Mike? Well, it, it actually slows down your endogenous, your, your body's fat it's burning. Better so, answering these questions than um, it, Look, mm -hmm. ex exogenous ketones are a tool. Yeah. They're a tool to help people understand how they might feel if they went on a ketogenic diet. They're not a weight loss tool. I'm sorry, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this and stuff like that. You don't eat them. It's like saying, oh, I want to burn sugar for fuel, so I'm going to eat more sugar. Right. Like, well, that doesn't really you know, kind of makes sense. So if you want to burn fat, what, I mean, obviously you can eat more fat, you know, in your diet and, and lower the carbohydrates, which would create the metabolic signature <clears throat> so that your body makes more ketones and you burn more fat for fuel. Mm -hmm. But when you add in exogenous ketones, this happens when we add in exogenous thyroid hormone, exogenous estrogen, testosterone, yeah, when you, add, you know, <clears throat> you create this end product feedback inhibition. Right. So when you add in ketones, what you're doing is you're actually suppressing endogenous ability to make ketones because the body's saying oh there's ketones around well hey liver like you know slow down the synthesis of beta hydroxybutyrate and ketogenesis right 
I love so, that. That just makes so much sense. Our yeah. bodies are smarter than we are innately, right? But it's not a bad it's not a bad thing to take them very short term, for example, for performance. For performance, yeah. For the for the athlete or for someone that doesn't want to change their diet and they have Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or yeah, seizures, right. yeah. or you have a young kid that's epileptic and they're not mm -hmm. going to change their diet or they have autism, right. kid, that's where it's, it's a good tool. Right. We're not totally trashing on it. But if you want to lose weight... Let your body do it naturally. Yeah. Give your body a chance, man. Okay. Um, do, I, do I have to eat grass-fed <laughs> butter? Just can't find some. Um, where do you live? I, you know, grass-fed butter is like a popular commodity. It's like everywhere now, even in like Walmart. So... Um, so I think you, you could definitely find some to go, go to a different grocery store. Okay, so a couple more questions. Hello guys, any tips on dropping my body fat percentage? Great BMI since going microbiome friendly, love it, but would like to further drop body fat. Well, that's why if you click the link here, our Keto Lean Masterclass, we help you do that through exercise too. Yeah. Diet is important, but if you're not exercising, it's really, really hard to kind of get that physique that you're wanting. Exactly. So you gotta exercise and we're yeah. gonna teach you that. Aaron says, yes, thanks. Okay, Devin says, um, awesome, really helps my question. Thank you, guys. How do you measure ketones? Uh, how do you measure blood sugar? Talked about this in past videos. I would get a 24-hour glucose monitor, continuous glucose monitor. The Abbott Freestyle is great. Mm -hmm. And then the Precision Extra ketone strips are awesome. Getting both is cool. So a few more questions here. I've heard you should eat, try to eat 30 grams of protein per meal to get mTOR going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. mTOR is stimulated by a few things, insulin, protein, amino acids, and also exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, our favorite way to stimulate mTOR is movement and exercise, obviously. Mm -hmm. But yeah, amino acids can help with that. Uh, is it necessarily, if you have 30 grams, and we're gonna talk about this with Dr. Gabrielle Lyon shortly in a mm -hmm. podcast. It's a great podcast. If you just have 30 grams of protein from spinach, you may not stimulate mTOR because you need that leucine. Right. So it's not always about the quantity of the protein, it's the quality of the protein and the type of amino acids. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last question here, uh, Dennis says, whenever I get into ketosis measured by blood, I feel absolutely weak and lack energy. I take salt, magnesium, et cetera, et cetera. So Dennis, maybe it's not for you. I would, mm -hmm. you know, Again. maybe there's more yeah. adaptation that needs to go on. Right. Uh, why are you trying to be keto? Just because everyone else is? Or is there some disease state you're trying to ameliorate or cognition that you're trying to improve? Right. Um, if you feel like shit, then, you know, there could be a variety of things, mm -hmm. genetically, epigenetically, absorption, et cetera. I would say you want to check out your blood glucose and ketones at the same time. See where things are at. If blood glucose is low and ketones are low, there's a problem making ketones within the liver and we need to dig deeper on that. So that's what I would say to you, Dennis, is what's going on there? Is If your blood glucose is high and you're in ketosis, well, maybe there's more insulin resistance going on than we understand. Mm -hmm. So maybe try things like berberine hydrochloride, omega-3 fats, uh, exercise, etc. Best way to increase your HGH, sleep, 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 sleep. Also resistance training, full body weight movements, and not eating a bunch of food before bed. What yeah. do you think? Oh, absolutely. Stress reduction. Just listening to you. Yeah. I love this. Um, <laughs> Stress reduction, yeah. So, so guys, we are going to part ways. I really appreciate all of you tuning in. If you're yes, still watching this or you. the replay, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. And if you want to learn how to make low carb yet microbiome friendly bread, that is also ketogenic and has a lot of dietary diversity, click the link right here, guys, because that is where you get access to our Keto Lean Masterclass, where we not only show you how to uh, properly construct a ketogenic diet that is simultaneously microbiome friendly, but we teach you, most importantly, how to exercise and how to cook with real food. Yes. So if you're sick of just seeing all these posts about bacon and you know, pork and butter, there's many different ways to get into ketosis that is absolutely healthy and healthier than that approach. Right. So that's what we stand by. That's what we'd like to teach on this channel is how to boost your bacterial diversity and stay keto. So we are going to sign off. We're actually going to the gym. Yeah. What are we lifting today? A little of everything. Some circuits. Just get some movement. I'm excited. Movement. Super excited. Um, yeah. Okay. The last question. How do you feel about extended fast for fat loss? I saw that one. Yeah. I don't know about extended fast for fat It's life. not the best tool, yeah. extended, because why? Because you need to be exercising. So look, yeah. if, if you have cancer, strong family history of cancer, or you have brain issues and things like that, you fasting or you, or you have accelerated aging because of a poor lifestyle, extended fast can be good, but you know, it's hard to exercise if you have had no fuel. It's mm -hmm. hard to have a really good workout. And so a foundation of like what we are very biased <laughs> for is muscle. Where you burn fat is freaking muscle. So if you do extended fast, 
at some point you're going to start to burn muscle, Maybe right? Just like once a week, a 24 hour fast, just to kind of boost it, but just yeah. don't do like just a nice hike or whatnot, but then you got to get that res resistance training in. Absolutely. Yeah. So Lisa yeah. says she lo loves bacon. I don't know a human being that doesn't like bacon. We love that, bacon too. We <laughs> that's do. not the point. It's a treat though. The, yeah, the it's point is it's a treat. It's yeah. processed meat. Animals store a lot of endocrine disrupting chemicals in fat. Bacon is very high in fat. Also when you have bacon fat and even butter, even though we have butter, we make our own special ghee with phytonutrients. Um, that increases the absorption of bacterial endotoxin, which can slow down the formation of ketones and cause you to be insulin resistant. So we're not saying we don't love bacon. We love bacon too. We just choose to limit it in the diet and get fats from other sources that are more healthy on a long-term basis. Right. So that clarified. Uh, creatine, yes, for sure. Creatine is awesome. Creatine is a nutrient found in meat that you eat. A carnonutrient, creatine, and, and carnosine are found in meat, guys. So Lisa smiles. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. That's cool. All right, you know, friend, Really appreciate you tuning in. A few next steps, please subscribe to the channel, like this video, and sign up for our Keto Lean Masterclass if you wanna learn how to be keto, yet have a healthy microbiome. We're gonna sign off. Oh, and follow us on Instagram too, guys, because you get a lot of free stuff on there at Real Food Lab and Metabolic Mike. We do try to share a lot of recipes on our IG stories, so free's good, right? Free is good. Free's good. All right, let's, uh, mm. what was this one? All right, we're signing off, guys. <laughs> really appreciate you tuning in. Um, adios. See you later. Have a good weekend.